Nobody move, nobody flinch, nobody look at this market the wrong way, because dare I say it, we are actually starting to build out what appears to be more of a constructive hold for an uptrend over 4.17.25, as opposed to an abysmal rotation back into the quote, godforsaken range. That'll be the main topic of today's episode of the Midweek Market Update, and of course we will build a game plan for the remainder of the week. Check out all the links that we have down below in the description, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, all that good stuff, and make sure you stay tuned until the end of today's episode. I've got two additional trade ideas to share with you that you won't want to miss, and with that said, let's kick things off here for the Midnight Special on our SPY Daily Time frame chart. What's going on from a trend perspective? Well, if you tuned into the Monday abbreviated analysis, we really made it a point to say that, hey, we've just produced an equal high after a set of equal lows. The best thing we could say about the daily trend is that it's neutral, unfortunately. Although it may feel like up, it was certainly neutral at that point in time. Now, we get a gift on the Tuesday gap up open because instantly, what this does is provide a little bit of bullish context, producing a brand new higher high, allowing markets to pull back and search for a reasonable higher low on the daily time frame chart. And it's my belief, and you'll see this based on some evidence in just a moment, that this Tuesday and Wednesday pullback here is exactly that, a reasonable higher low trying to be produced around this 417.25 area. If you're not sure why we're talking about 417.25, we know that it represents the top of this balance range. And in a picture perfect world, a break retest higher low and go is found at once again 417.25. So you can see on the daily structure that we do have a hammer-esque type bar and the lower wick of course implies that we breached 417.25 but buyers step up and the most important part about the daily structure is that we close back above 41725 and there's no attempt for resistance underneath and some kind of intraday lower high to close weak on the lows of this structure. There's no violation and technically another look above and fail that could unfold with the daily close being above 41725. So that's the most noteworthy part of the daily time frame chart and once again we're looking at lows the opportunity here for a higher set of lows. Let's continue to build the case for the buyers stepping up here and holding this uptrend on the hourly time frame chart. The first thing that strikes me here is what's going on with the first hourly bar of today's session. Technically, we go for a gap fill reversal, and then there's no attempt from the buyers to find any support at 417.25 on the first attempt there in that first hourly bar. And you'll notice we firmly close underneath. The next hourly bar closes at the lows of its trading range. And that's looking fairly concerning. The reason that's concerning is because if we look left, this, as we know, the squeeze structure from last Friday is extremely thin. There's no support there structurally. So in theory, with this sell side momentum early on today's session, the sellers should have had no problem going for the 100% retracement of that move because of the lack of structure there. It simply did not happen. So, okay, if we're not going to get continuation, the next most bearish thing that could happen is just continued lower highs underneath 417.25. So, all right. Good to go in that upper wick, good to go in that upper wick, and suddenly into the afternoon, no longer good to go. There's no opportunity there for a lower high underneath 417.25. And once again, that daily close being above sort of cements the idea that the sellers failed twice. They failed to get down to the structure here, and they failed to form an intraday lower high underneath 417.25 to keep the close underneath that level. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue that this is the picture perfect bull scenario either, because in a picture perfect world, as we recapture that opening print, we would have closed above the opening print. It simply wasn't the case. So there is some concession to be made here on the bull side as well. But I do feel as though on the daily chart with the close over 417.25 and exactly what we just walked through, the lack of selling pressure to you know really repair that structure and the, the uh, thin structure there, to me, there's there's a bullish edge here based on what didn't happen from the sellers, right? With the context that we just produced a brand new daily higher high. So, okay, we've laid the groundwork. How do we actually get involved in the trade for the remainder of this week? Obviously, the bullish structure is staying above 417.25. Then you're looking for a breakout up and over 418.65. That's going to be representative of this, which is the gatekeeper for those single prints in the first place. We'll see that on the market profile in just a moment. It's your Tuesday low. It's almost the open of today's session, but it's clearly the rejection for the afternoon. So a break over 418.65 unlocks the move into the equal high from 
the squeeze last Friday. That's 420.50. Then your next target is going to be the opening print of Tuesday, not the high of day at 422. That's your upside, all stemming from a hold of 417.25. What do the bears want to see here? Well, if you're looking to sell this market short, if you're looking to play some downside, you need to wait for the break of 417.25. Then you're looking for the equal low flush. The reason I would not just look to short this is because we already saw the evidence that there was no lower high underneath. The sellers need to prove themselves. The buyers do not necessarily need to prove themselves as much or to the same degree, essentially, with the recapture into the close. So I wouldn't look to short 417.25. I would look for bearish acceptance underneath and then a breakdown through the low of day, which is a poor low. We'll see that on the market profile in just a moment to be your gatekeeper to complete the thin structure retracement down towards 414.75, where the squeeze stemmed from last Friday. Anything underneath that goes into your gap fill reversal zone from the Thursday session at 413. What is some confluence that adds into this narrative? If we take out the Fibonacci's from the low of Thursday to the high of the Tuesday gap up, remember that we're using the Thursday low of last week, not the Wednesday low, because this is really where the rally stems from. All of Wednesday's price action was really more indicative of the sellers being in control, right? The reversal, the buying activity comes from the Thursday gap green over red. So that's why we're using that low. And lo and behold, your 61.8 is the low of day. Your 38.2 is the breakout level that we just discussed. 418.65 and 416.25 is roughly your low and uh, poor low breakdown point from today's session. But wait, there's more. It gets better. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to throw on the anchored view app. And what you'll notice here is two things. If we anchor it to the Thursday session, which in my estimation is the correct anchor, you can get a little bit subjective with the anchors, but nonetheless, the line will always be objective. Um, so what we see here is that we recaptured it, right? Once again, if the sellers were going to make more damage happen, it would have been a lower high underneath 417.25 or a lower high underneath the anchored view app. Obviously the recapture is a bit more bullish than bearish. And if we can open above that, it's another reason to look at this as a strong area of support, right? That's building the bullish case here. The other thing that you could do here is it would not technically be wrong if you bumped this back one day to the Wednesday session where a lot of volume was still technically committed. You want to see if these sellers are, you know, where, where do they stand, right? If a lot of selling volume was going through here and your anchored view app is going to start there, where do those sellers stand? Well, all of them are still underwater because we're above that anchored view app and lo and behold, it acts as perfect support at the low of day. Right, So another reason to not technically short 417.25, but rather wait for the flush, look for consolidation underneath, and then an equal low breakdown and a break through that anchored view up is a bit more attractive for your rotation into 414.75. So that's building the up and down case. Once again, I do think on the chart in front of us, there's more evidence to suggest that this is a reasonable and healthy pullback. And as long as we can do this, the bullish trades are on the table. Let's take a look at some supporting evidence. Market internals are always exhibit A for supporting evidence. If you're not familiar with the screen, check out the tutorial in the top right hand corner. Let's keep it extremely simple here and ask one question. Is this a mild pullback or are new money sellers getting aggressive? If we take a look at volume flows, very mild on the Tuesday session, a little bit more aggressive on the Wednesday session, but neither day breaches negative 300 million, no new money sellers here. If we take a look at the advanced decline line, tangled at the zero line, and here we're actually able to make a new high of day into the close. We never spend any time this week so far in trend lower zone, so new money sellers, nah, not really. If we look at the cumulative tick, this is extremely telling. Parity read on the Tuesday session, basically closing flat. And then on today's session, closing positive, and not just a benign positive read at like positive 500 or 1,000 or something like that. We actually get up towards positive 2,000. Don't get me wrong, it's not 5,000. We're not pounding the table for new money buyers entering this market right now. But if we look at the weight of the evidence in front of us, just like we saw the lack of retracement through the thin structure on the uh, SPY daily and hourly charts as, hey, stronger sellers not really here, we could say the same thing about internals. It is supporting the claim that this is a mild pullback thus far. Exhibit B is market profile. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the tutorial in the top right hand corner. For the most part, this one also speaks for itself. We'll keep it very simple. Here is the single prints and thin structure from the squeeze last Friday. You can see that we did not retrace all of it. Another great illustration of that. If we look at the day to day interactions, notice that the point of control is at halfback. Halfback is the purple dashed line in the profile. And the same thing holds true here on today's Wednesday session. The point of control is at halfback. If stronger sellers were committing volume 
volume at lower prices, you would expect point of control and value area as well to migrate lower with price. It simply hasn't. You can see here that the value area was technically higher in the profile as opposed to lower on today's individual session. So lack of volume commitment at the lows is interesting, but we also have to acknowledge the deficiency here in structure, which is the poor low from today's session. If the sellers retest that, we should expect a breakdown through that low. We only have one TPO of excess down here at the bottom, and we did discuss that as the breakdown point on the SPY daily chart as well. I just want to focus on a couple of sectors that are in play tonight. So the XLK tech sector is the heaviest weighted sector of the S&P, and it certainly doesn't look great into the remainder of this week. Don't get me wrong. We are in a firm uptrend here. We've just gone on a parabolic squeeze, produced a brand new higher high. That's fine and dandy. But into the remainder of this week, this inverted hammer from today's session does not bode too well. Clearly, the upper wick shows a rejection of the previous day's range, and we close weak on the lows of today's session. If we break underneath those lows, again, it's it's completely, you know, the daily trend is not in jeopardy of changing. We're still looking for that higher low. But if the XLK heaviest weighted component of the S&P is continuing to pull back, it probably doesn't bode well for the S&P finding that bullish outcome in the first place. The only thing that can kind of combat this is if the XLK does decide to pull back and then snap sideways for the remainder of this week, or at least intraday. And then we see some outperformance from the XLY number one, which did technically produce a hammer candle on today's session, finding buyers towards those lows. Don't get me wrong. It's still very much so stuck in this range. We would need to get a breach of the hammer high and exceed 153.75. That produces bullish outcomes for the SPY if the XLK is going sideways. And the other big one is going to be your XLF, the financial sector, which we know has been extremely weak. But look at the hammer on today's session. Once again, think about the psychology here. We breach all of these prior lows. The sellers, in theory, should have momentum. Big flush of a descending triangle that would look something like this. Where do we close? Back on 31.75. So it's it's not a call that this must see a move in the upward direction, but I'm a little bit skeptical of sellers at this point in time in financials specifically. So we'll see if this can resolve higher. And once again, if this is taking place along with the XLY hammer break and the XLK can at least go sideways, not see a continuation of this pullback, that probably helps the bullish narrative in the SPY. If the XLK pulls back aggressively, if the XLY does not break the hammer high, if the XLF drifts lower here, then yeah, forget about it. You're probably not going to see that strong move in the S&P itself. Here's the ratio grid. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the tutorial in the top right hand corner on how to set this one up. Overall, the top four are the heavyweight sectors and continue to note that the XLK, even if it does pull back, just produced a really, really sizable higher high. So strong opportunity for a higher low. Once again, the structural chart would suggest that we can continue to see some downside into the remainder of this week, but on a relative basis, definitely more of a risk on indication for our markets as we search for that higher low. Uh, the XLF continues to be the big red flag. Nothing has changed there. And I really want to point out in the XLY, the fact that this higher low did not hold. We produce an equal low, but notice that we instantly rebound up here for the equal high. There's no jeopardy of a lower high being found on the XLY ratio. This does strike me as a reasonably solid indication for the risk on look. Remember that XLV is technically D for defensive, but the second heaviest weighted sector, which is why it's up here in the first place. But this is not the end of the world. We don't want it falling off of a cliff. And unfortunately, it recently has been. Let's see if this can find a footing here. Um, the closest tie to the XLK, as we know, is the XLC, chugging along, making higher highs, and all of the bottom four are the risk-off sectors firmly, and you'll notice that they are dropping in the downward direction, so it's pretty difficult to say that a risk-off look is prevalent in this market at this point. If we look at the XLY over the XLP, so growth versus value, continues to break in the upward direction, this is more supportive of the risk-on look as well. It's the bear's favorite part of the show where we start talking about some negative divergences. The dollar continues to creep higher, which, as we know, technically should put some downward pressure on equities underneath us here. And the gold contract would tend to agree with that sentiment, noting that we do have a break retest already an inverted hammer on the attempt at 2000 and continuing for lower lows. As we know, the relationship carries through the dollar and thus into equities. And we are looking for more than perhaps just a mild pullback as of right now. So bearish out of the dollar and gold currently. If we look at the TNX and zoom in, this is the 10 year interest rate. It's putting in a very classic pattern, almost like the SPY itself, break retest, looking for a higher low in continuation if I was purely looking at it from a technical perspective. Now, the complicating factor, of course, is the 
jobs data that comes out on Friday, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we will be live on the stream to sort of take in that data, interpret it, and make a game plan for the day, but I wouldn't be overly committed to the TNX resolving 36.4 until those numbers are out. Uh, in theory, if we bounce here and it does produce a higher low from here to here, right, then what we're looking at should be a negative reaction from equities. If this turns into a look above and fail, and we rotate towards the bottom, 33.75, it should produce a positive outcome for equities based on rates and their implication for the tech sector and profit margins that's there. Um, the jolts numbers came out this morning as a preview, and they were really, really solid, creeping back up to that two to one ratio of job openings for every one employed, unemployed person, excuse me. Uh, if we look at the TLT bonds, we're going to skip the Fed tracker tool tonight. It's too late for that. Uh, we're nowhere near the break of the resistance trend line, but the TLT in relationship to the S&Ps did tick higher on today's session as the S&Ps were pulling back. That is noteworthy. And it's a slight, you know, I don't want to call it a red flag yet. The break of the trend line would be the red flag, but keep an eye on your TLT. Uh, as long as it's underneath, again, it sort of supports the idea that people are comfortable with risk in equities right now. If we take a look at something like our bonds ratios, so this is short duration IEI versus IEF more medium term, then we have medium term versus longer term TLT, right? We were becoming a little bit concerned about this uptrend forming here, people chasing shorter term yields uh, in, in that short duration that's been undone here, which once again speaks to folks willing to take more risk in things like the QQQ versus the TLT. No flight to safety trade happening in that ratio down below. Once again, speaks to risk taking in markets as a whole. Let's take a look at the HYG, which is junk bonds. And this continues to be in a clear negative divergence. Uh, you know, the most obvious one is from here to here. S&P is actually making a higher high now. You can see a small, slight uptrend to that line there. But if we get more granular, clearly the most recent one is a negative lower high out of the HYG with an equal high here in the S&Ps. Does not mean that we go out and short S&Ps? Absolutely not. Does not mean that we might want to be skeptical about a break and continuation? Sure, I would say that that is reasonable at this point in time. Let's take a look at one breath chart. Really, it's just going to boil down to this one. It continues to really highlight the terrible, terrible nature of the market breath right now. Notice that we just came in and produced a higher high on the Tuesday gap up, right? What has the SPX A50R done? This is a daily time frame chart. This is the number, or I should say percent stocks trading above the 50 SMA in the S&P. It has actually just made a brand new lower low. I mean, you know, really, if I was going to get emotional here, I would be saying things like, are you kidding me? Like, come on, this is like all that nonsense. This is definitely continuing to be a major red flag for markets in terms of breath. So carry that one forward. We're going to skip out on all the other breath indications for tonight and move right along into our VIX and some volatility measures. VIX is broken. It's in the midpoint of the range. Fine. You can tell me that all you want. But as of right now, it's signaling comfort from the market down below. Let's look at some more evidence. Don't you worry, bears. I've got a secret one up my sleeve tonight for you. So hopefully Hopefully you're uh, tuning into the midnight special, but the VIX hasn't broken the trend line yet, but if it does, and once again, based on these inverted hammers on the daily time frame chart, it would suggest more downward activity upcoming. Uh, but if we do break the trend line, it's definitely more comfort for the market down below. Things would be fine and dandy. And even if we look at our VIX futures, they're signaling contango, right? We're in a strong move here. There is no backwardation. Present risk is less than future risk. And you can see the same thing here out of nine versus 30 day VIX with a lower high underneath the zero mark. Once again, just implying that current day risk is less than some future unknown risk. But here you go, bears. Here is the one for you. If we look at something like our SKU, remember that SKU measures tail risk uh, in terms of 30 day plus volatility on the options chain. Huge, huge new imprint at levels we have not seen in quite some time. Uh, now, you can't really necessarily pair this up with a bearish outcome on the chart underneath us. Typically, that's more of the bullish reversals at a really uh, low skew, especially in an existing downtrend. But nonetheless, what this tells us is that folks are willing to position for a black swan event at this point in time. Could it have something to do with the debt ceiling crisis um, and the, the possibility, big air quotes around that, that the U.S. defaults on its debt? It's possible, but this is definitely a shot across the bow saying that people are positioned right now for a black swan event, which as we know would be you know, no one can predict it in the first place, but people are buying insurance basically is what this tells us. So that's going to do it in a nutshell. We're going to just quickly look at the QQQ to um, make sure all the folks out there get what they need. And then we'll look at those two trade ideas. 
Uh, we're going to keep it very brief in the remainder of the video here. So cues, midpoint of the weekly expected move, mild pullback, indecisive doji on today's session, not nearly at a structural significant level like the SPY itself. Here's the hourly time frame chart. You'll notice that we have not yet moved through the thin structure from the squeeze rally last Friday. So your key breakdown point is 346.75, key breakout point over 349. All right, so keep it simple here, over or under. Don't get chopped up in between. Next up is going to be IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps. What's going on over here? This is the hourly time frame chart. Let's go back to the daily uh, daily chart without even zooming in. You can just see we're in the midpoint of this range. So no existing edge, but I would say actually, let me zoom in on this. I think that that was probably a mistake to say. Um, if we do zoom in, and let's do something like this, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Notice that we have highs, lower highs, and now we have equal lows on the table. So with a lower high on, you know, in place, I would definitely say that the bears are building an edge here in the IWM and small caps and acting as a risk on risk off proxy doesn't really bode well for the remainder of the broad market, right? If we look at the hourly time frame chart, there was certainly an opportunity for an inverted head and shoulders breakout with the gap up on Tuesday. All we had to do was find support for a gap fill reversal above 175.75 simply didn't happen. Look at the massive fall off from this morning session. That's long liquidation. So all the folks who got caught up in this move here, all the folks who are buying up here, they're all out of this thing on that long liquidation this morning. And uh, certainly with that lower high in place, equal lows in place, the flush is underneath 172.85. Carry that one forward into the remainder of this week. Let's take a quick tour through the core list of companies. Very, very speedy for tonight's episode. Apple is all about the lows here underneath 176.75, a dollar gap to fill down to 175.75. Anything in here, I mean, that's frustrating to trade, like a 100% retracement right into the close, right? Very, very difficult to trade that. So take it in stride. I would really only be looking for this into the remainder of the week for bears. And when and if we do that, it's gap fill reversal, right? Gap fill reversal. 175.75, 176.75 opens that gap. Anything that's here, take it take it day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour. Uh, not a lot of structure to comment on there in Apple. Netflix produced an inside bar that is this in here. So it's long over these highs, basically at 395, looking for the top of the container bar, 405 or underneath the lows of the inside bar, which are closer to 390, opens the door for a deeper pullback to 375. Next up is going to be Tesla and Mr. Musk's stock. What's going on over here? Stronger move into the close. So unlike the SPY clearly closed over the opening print at the highs, almost a bullish engulfer on the daily. Let's take a look here. Uh, just shy of closing above that top. Notice that the lower wick pierces the prior low. Once again, closing strong at the top. I think that this is primed for a continuation move in the upward direction. I would be watching for upside out of Tesla as long as it wants to play nicely and consolidate. I would say at this point, any consolidation that's above the prior days open, $200 and 50 cents, any pullbacks that do this, any consolidation up here, watching for upside out of Tesla, your break is going to be over 204, over 204 in Tesla. Next up is Google. What's going on with the Goog? This one's playing nicely. You've got a simple range in play over or under 124.75, under 122.15. Next up is going to be Meta. What's going on with Zuckerberg's Fantasyland? Beautiful continuation move into the overhead gap, gapped down this morning, closed that gap and continued back into this. So if we go to the daily chart, actually, this is a bit more clear, right? You've got, you know, this is just a steady grind, but lows, now higher lows are building out up here. You could watch for a flag to be produced. You could look for a breakout intraday over 266 and continue to close that gap overhead. I would not be looking for shorts in meta as long as this higher low is holding here around 260. Next up is NVIDIA. What's going on with NIVDA? Giving back some of these gains here. This continues to be on the no touch list for me. Uh, it's just not worth it. You guys know this. If you've been watching the channel for any period of time, it doesn't fit my risk profile, my risk appetite. I would prefer not to gamble with these pie in the sky type moves and rather wait for some structure to build out. If I had to make some comments from a technical perspective, there's clearly a flush point here at 379. If we were to take that out, you can see that your target would be the low from the earnings gap up day at 366.16. Anything that's playing around in here, I wouldn't touch. And perhaps there might be, maybe, I would want to see the higher low above first, 389.75 as an inflection point. What's up next? We've got Microsoft. What's going on with Softy? Uh, slow grind lower happening here. Let's go to the daily chart and see if we can learn anything else. Look at that, actually. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away from all-time highs out of Microsoft. Um, but anyhow, daily chart, two equal highs here at 335.50. Carry that forward as a weak level. It could use some repair, but it doesn't look like it's in play soon. 
uh, I, I would say that you're, you're going to want to watch for some kind of structure to build out, something that does this, then maybe into early next week we do this in a reattempt. It's not really in play for anything as of right now based on this daily structure. Maybe continued pullback, and you're just going to want to watch this level right here at 321.50. But other than that, not a lot to really say uh, about Microsoft. If you wanted to be very, very granular, you could say 331 could be a level here. The Tuesday lows, intraday lower high on today's session. Next up, last but certainly not least, we've got the mini beast Amazon and a couple of trade ideas to share with you. Uh, what's going on with Amazon? Certainly, this comes to mind, right? Head and shoulders. Any lower highs that are under 220, or 121, excuse me, 25, that's looking for downside outcomes 118.50. Then further retracement through the thin structure brings you to 116.85. That's probably the primary outcome I would watch for um, out of Amazon. If we're looking for shorts, this head and shoulders really sets up on a break of a neckline. Oops, we want something that does this, grabbing the other tool here. Something that does this, a crack through, this zone really gets you through the thin structure. That's much more attractive to be trading through as opposed to trying to short it up here, not yet breaking this low. Be patient on this one. Wait for 118.50 and then look for 116.85. The two trade ideas that I have for you, thanks for making it all the way to the end. The first one is CROX. Crocs, believe it or not, C-R-O-X, if I could spell. There it is. I'm sure you can tell what hour of the night it is. Look at that clock right there. Crocs, what's going on here? Daily time frame chart's going to inform us. So it's actually at a decent price point. I'm always surprised when I look at Crocs. And the options chain, it's not great, but it's not the worst. So just play with caution. Uh, but look at this beautiful inside bar that's setting up. It's above the 50%, or at least the close is above the 50% of the prior green bullish engulfer. Or I wouldn't even call it an engulfer, but just outside bar to the up outside bar to the up. Wow, it really is late. But you get the idea, right? We're looking for a break over that container bar high, 115 roughly, for a rotation here as potentially a small swing trade or a scalp intraday uh, if we're just looking for upside outcomes. This could potentially be one of them. That's Crocs. And then last but not least is A, B, and B. And then we're out of here. We're going right to bed, man. Uh, we got to prep for tomorrow's <laughs> pre-market prep. Uh, Airbnb. Bullish engulfer, completely engulfing the prior spinning top in here. I wouldn't even really call it a spinning top. It's not at the top of anything, but you could also look at this as a double bottom, a W pattern, whatever you want to call this type of stuff, right? If you breach these highs, over 110.75 gets interesting, clearing that uh, 200 SMA, clearing that potential neckline of the double bottom. And now you're looking at the 50 SMA. And then beyond that, you've really got a gap in here to start trading for. So 115 is the first target, 115 daily 50 SMA in the bottom of the gap, and the gap closes at 125. Bullish engulfer, plenty of momentum on today's session. Look at the volume increase as well down below. And last but certainly not least, if we take a look at the hourly time frame chart, notice that we open on a gap down, there's an opening drive lower, and then it screams nonstop to the upside. So the sellers had their chance. We broke down underneath the previous low. There's no attempt at a sort of rejection here. We continue through. There's no attempt at a rejection at the previous high of day, and we close strong at the top of today's trading range. So Airbnb, definitely some momentum from the buyers here and uh, the daily sort of structure makes sense as well up and over that 11074 115 and then 125 so that's going to do it enough of my rambling i am going to bed hopefully you are as well i will see you in the pre-market prep tomorrow morning at 8 15 and i wish you all a green trading week <laughs>